What's going on everybody? So I'm back out here looking for my hatch. Um, I got the Arrows Edge 540 I'm going to maiden today. Kind of excited about that, a little nervous. I'm running like 60% raids, 40% expo for the lowest setting just to try and tame it down as much. This is the first like real 3D plane I've ever flown. And it's a lot windier than the weather said it was going to be. And my anonymeter is dead. So I can't get a real wind speed reading, but it's pretty windy. A um, little bit of sun. So it's going to be interesting. We're going to fly that now. I'm running these HRB 2660 C's. And if you put that uh, 4S like all the way to the front of the compartment, you end up with the CG basically exactly where the middle range was in the handbook. So I'm hoping that works out okay. You know, I think nose heavy is going to be better in this situation. Um, so we're going to see how that goes. I also brought the A10 and the Yak back out. I'm going to see how much more flight time I get between uh, HRB 3300 6S 60C and my big fat boy CNHL 70C 4000s. The only thing is this battery weighs like 700 grams. So it's a significant, I think these are 567. I mean, it's like 150 grams heavier, but in reality, because it's a graphing pack, that's actually more like a 4,500 or maybe even a 5,000. Um, so it's gonna be interesting to see kind of if there's any performance trade-offs and how much more flight time I get, because especially on the A10, getting into the throttle, it sags the battery quite a bit. Granted, they are older packs. Um, they're actually both about the same amount of cycles, the 4000s and the 3300. So I'm gonna try and get an even comparison and see where that ends up. All right, what's up guys? I'm out here with the Yak 130 doing the battery test on the HRB 3300 6S 60C, which I'm not gonna bury you uh, the boring details of flying, but now I now have the CNHL 6S 70C 4000 graphene, which flies more like a 4500 or a 5000. It is 700 grams versus the 540 for the 3300. So it's gonna be interesting to see how this works. Um, rather than going for max fly time, I'm gonna fly the same pattern on both batteries back to back and land at the timer when it expires and then measure the voltage differential and just see how many more volts I have left when I land. I think that's gonna be a better representation instead of pushing it um, until it falls out of the sky. So. I'm going to try this. I um, already flew the 3300s for the A10 and the Yak and got the data for that. And now I'm going to fly the 4000s. It is kind of windy out. I'm at mid rates, AS3X only. And we will see how she does. Four minute timer reset.
can see I am not being nice to this battery for the four minute timer. So I think we will get an accurate depiction. back pressure, half flaps. Eh, I don't like it, we're gonna go around. Definitely has a little more float with the 4000 in there. I'm gonna walk and pick it up and then I'll let you guys know the voltages in the end. All right, what's up guys? I got the A10 out, doing battery testing with the Yaxi A10, the HRB 3300 60C 6S, and the CNHL 70C 6S 4000 graphene, which technically fits in the A10. I wouldn't say it fits well, the canopy is kind of wedged on there. Uh, it's pushed as far back as I can get it. It's about 707 grams versus, I don't know, 540 for the HRV. So I'm kind of just seeing where we're going to be uh, in terms of flight time. Uh, definitely for the Yak, it's flight time consideration on the A10. It's more for when I nail it, I don't want to be in uh, on the voltage limiter, on the low battery limit, which happens on the 3300s a lot. So I think I'm slightly more nose heavy than I was on the 3300 pack, but we're going to go ahead and fly to the timer and then land and then I'll post the results uh, at the end of the video with the yak data the 3300 versus the 4000 and same with the a10 same flight timer same day back to back flights uh, we're just going to look at the voltage difference when I land um, at basically the end of the timer so we're going to check it out and see how we go I'm in mid range as3x only I definitely didn't hit voltage, low battery warning there, so that was an improvement. For sure nose heavy. A couple. Whoa. That was kind of weird. Not really sure what was up with that. So far so good. It is nose heavy. But this has plenty of elevator authority anyway, so I don't think I'm really going to be too worried about that. Try a full speed pass here into the wind. Oh yeah, much better. No low voltage warning at all, and that was that was all the way 100% throttle that whole time. So that is definitely a huge improvement going to the 70C uh, graphene higher capacity pack.
much improved. I feel like I can actually use the power that it's got now. There was our first winner. Let's do a with the wind high speed pass. going to go to high rates because I am noticeably lighter on the elevator being notes heavy like it is. I'm having to ride the elevator a little bit but Set up for final here. I'm gonna go back to well, you know, we're gonna land in high rates. You're down. Bring in a notch of flaps. Just don't want to stall coming into the wind here. Flaps, power, flare. A little bouncy there. Definitely had some oscillation on that, but I think we're okay. Yeah, that full flaps and that wind definitely got me on that one, but no damage, so that battery's in there so tight the canopy pops straight out of there. Uh, this might actually be kind of tough to get the battery out. Okay, we're going to cut here, and I'll post the data at the end of the video. Hey, what's up, guys? <clears throat> I normally don't do this, but I'm back at home, and I wanted to kind of film like a quick outro. There were some people at the field flying, and I always let people know when I'm filming, but... I don't like to film people any more than I have to, so I didn't really feel comfortable sitting there and talking on camera for five or ten minutes with everybody around and, you know, getting other people on camera. So, today I flew the 3300 HRB 60C6S and the CNHL 4070C6S Graphene, which this really actually flies like a 4500 or maybe even a 5000. I think this one's about 567 grams, uh, the HRB. And this is about 708 but what i really wanted to know was on the yak and on the a10 um, if there was a difference in handling and performance on the two batteries number one number two flight time and then number three battery sag under load um, what i did is i flew the 3300 and then i immediately flew the 4000 in the yak and then i did the same in the a10 I didn't film the 3300 flights uh, just because everyone's already seen me fly it on 3300 and honestly I can't push them that hard anyway because the voltage really tends to sag uh, especially on the A10 if you watch my last video you notice that even on takeoff like which I have queued up it basically like I was already on the low battery 3.7 volts uh, the telemetry warning so filming the 3300s, I don't think was going to do anybody any good. What I did is I flew both batteries on both jets with the timer set the same and the voltage cutoff set the same. As soon as the timer elapsed, I came in and landed. And then I'm going to post a card at the end that shows the total flight time over 25%, so useful throttle, uh, what I landed at 
in voltage. And I figured that was the fairest way to kind of get a grip on, was I getting any more time? And if not, which, you know, I was trying to fly the same length of flights, was my voltage substantially higher when I landed? Uh, the other thing, if you go back and watch the A10 main video, um, I'll try and post a link for anybody that hasn't seen it. You'll notice the whole time I'm flying, anytime I'm romping on it, I'm hitting that low battery, beep, 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 beep. And it really limited what I could do with the jet. Uh, on the Yak, I don't have telemetry, so I don't really know how much I was hitting low voltage. Um, so, you know, I just flew it like I stole it until the timer ran out and then landed it. Um, flying both today, I can tell you the Yak felt a little more responsive. It didn't really feel like it had any additional weight. It glided a lot better, actually, with the much heavier battery, which was surprising. Um, the A10 is where the big difference was. I was able to sustain full throttle 20, 30 seconds at wide open throttle and not hit low battery until I was like three minutes into the flight. Um, it didn't really feel any different as far as the weight. I did notice the elevator was less sensitive, probably because I was more nose heavy. This battery shoved in the A10 barely fits. And I pushed it as far back as I could where you'll see the front battery strap is kind of at the end of the battery and then this is wedged all the way, or excuse me, the rear battery strap. And this is wedged all the way into the fuselage. Um, but it's still not quite as tail heavy as I would like it. So I'm gonna have to up my rates on the elevator for every profile just cause it doesn't have that snappy uh, elevator response that I want. Um, but other than that, it flew great. And I think if you're flying a twin, you definitely need a high C battery. Um, the biggest capacity you can fit in there without getting a, uh, a negative handling or performance effect, you know, where the wing loading gets too high or it tends to slide out in turns or something like that. Um, because th those EDFs really do chew at these batteries. And, you know, on my eight inch quadcopter, I can run 75 miles an hour at 75 amps with this battery for six minutes. So I knew it was gonna do good on the A10 and I really wasn't let down uh, at all. It really made, it's almost like having a different plane. Uh, just being able to use the throttle all the time, whatever I want is huge. So um, check out the video. I flew them as hard as I could. You know, I kind of wanted to just hit it as hard as I could and see how much I could get out of the battery to try and make it a little more even on the 3300s where, you know, it's lighter, so it should be using less energy. I flew hard on both packs, but definitely the 4000, I just laid into it. So um, I hope you liked the video and let me know what you think. I'll post a card at the end with the final times and voltages and everything um, so you can make a decision for yourself. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching.